What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are getting back on the EV truck. We are about to take off these wheels and this hood so that way Tim can get access to all these old suspension parts. We have to cut out all this old stuff on the front and the back, all these mounting points so we could get the new rocker arms mocked up and we could get the information as far as the ratios so they could get our coilovers sent out as soon as possible. Chloe and I are gonna take the wheels off, get the hood off, so Timmy could jump in here and do his magic. There's gonna be a lot of metal shavings and we don't wanna damage these beautiful six piston Woolwood calipers. So we're gonna tape it up right now, just so we don't scratch up our beautiful parts. I need to learn how to spell, daughter. There we go. All right, guys, Mike cut the crap out of the front of the EV truck. As you can see, we have some mounts missing. Coil levers used to be there, and now it's just air. So now we're moving on to the phase that I'm pretty excited about, which is using our S2S push rod kit. We actually sold one already. So let us know in the comments section below what other parts you might want to see us make. But for right now, talk to my buddy Kyle at KMC. He actually has a lot of push rod vehicles that he's built in the past. He was saying that your rocker arm needs to be completely 90 with the push rod. So if you can picture this eyelet here, it's gonna go straight down to our wheel. It can't be kicked over any way, shape or form. So what I need to do is I need to fabricate the actual outboard side of the rocker arm system first. Once the rocker is in place and it's got really good range of motion, it's not gonna hit anything. Then I can start taking some measurements for the actual push rod. So I'm gonna start with the back because I'm lazy and I, I know that's gonna be the easier part. So we got both rockers tacked in place. Now, the only hiccup that I'm finding is that the rocker arms wanted to kind of come on an angle, which isn't a huge deal for heim joints because heim joints, obviously, we can rotate them. So they don't have to be square with each other for them to work. What matters is that when I put a straight edge from on this surface and on this surface, it's completely flat, completely level. Our pickup for the center originally was going to be this guy, fixed square, but obviously it's not square, it's on an angle. So I'm gonna have to cut right between the V and the A on our Salvage to Savage logo there. And I'm gonna make this guy two pieces. So our fake struts are done. These are just mock-up strut bars. They're literally just gonna replace the coilover because we don't have the exact coilover length or measurement yet. We still have to do some math. I'm gonna use this to get our rocker to that 90 degrees that we were talking about. So now we gotta get situated in the truck and then start figuring out our base plate that these guys are gonna mount to. Starting to take shape. I'm gonna have to come up with some sort of bracket to hold these guys. This right here, we have a 90. And this right here, we have a 90. Putting our coil over at a nice downward slope back down to our chassis. You can see why we had to cut that thing in half. There's no way both coil overs are just gonna match it right there in the center. So we got our base plates cut. These are gonna go underneath the actual mounting points for the coilover. We're gonna add a bar, same inch and five eighths material from here straight across on the leading edge. And then the base plate's gonna be like kind of rock forward. Sponsor. This week's episode is brought to you by Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly subscription membership which caters to all your needs from mixology to knives to outdoor survival kits. When you sign up, you take a brief quiz so that way you're ensured that each box is sent to you is tailored to your needs exactly. I'm trying out the smoke box. 
which is super cool. It comes everything you need to smoke your favorite cheeses, sauces, meats, and your favorite spirit. Bespoke Post allows you to review the box they're gonna send you. You have three options. You keep it, you switch it out for another box, or you skip the month entirely and there's no charge to you. I like this box so much, I already ordered another one. I ordered me a nice set of outdoor knives. Where are the knives? If you guys are interested in your very own Bespoke Box, click that link in our bio and use code STS20 to receive 20% off your first box. Meanwhile, I'm gonna get the guys back to work. The base plate is looking good. This thing's gonna look pretty saucy once the coilover's in there. Moving to the front of the truck, I'm gonna get the rocker arms in the front situated, and then we'll go ahead and throw the body kit back on, throw the wheels back on, start setting our ride height and measuring for our end links. Well, I originally cut these tabs at four inches long. They work pretty good for the back, but in order to catch the landing for the shock mount on that crossbar right there, right in front of the inverter, gonna have to kick these over on kind of an angle. Passenger side front rocker is in. I'm liking the placement. I have a nice and square setup under the control arm here. Straight down, good to go. Now, I just have to figure out how this is gonna mount to here. So we're gonna go ahead and cut some more mounting plates. I wanna get this passenger side pretty dialed in as far as where I want it to lie. And then just like the rear guys, we'll use our angle finder for the tabs to find what angle these are at. We'll measure from the firewall over to here and just duplicate everything. All right, I'm pretty happy with how this came out. We got our driver's side rocker mounted in place. Everything's looking good there. So I'm gonna shift focus back to the rear of the truck, get our end links welded in place, and then we're going to use our wide body kit, obviously, got our wheel in place. We'll lift it up to the right height that we're desiring, probably about an inch, inch and a quarter. So these are our heim joint assemblies that we're gonna do. We have right thread and left thread. The reason you do that is so that you can adjust it without having to unbolt it from the vehicle. And so they both extend and depress at the exact same rate when you're threading this thing in and out. And then you have these locking nuts on the ends here that'll hold it in position. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our right hand thread on top, left hand thread on bottom, with the bone actually attached into it. We're going to bolt them into the rocker and into the actual Tesla upright. And then we're gonna take our measurement, cut it on our chop saw, weld a bump on the bench, and our rear push rod end links are all done. And then we get to move to the front, which is a little bit more challenging, but let's get the back end done first. So I went ahead and TIG welded our bungs on the end of this actual heim. This is what your end link is gonna look like pretty much when you're all set with this. This line on the one bung, it shows that it's a reverse thread. So we're probably gonna have that facing up. All right, we have our first end link in. You can see the whole assembly, guys. Got a 90 degree here, got a 90 degree here. Pretty happy, actually looks pretty good. Back end is pretty much there. We got our end link, rocker arm, and our fake coilover in place. What do you think, Cal? It looks pretty good. I what? like it, I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, it's added to another dynamic. The back of this truck looks like a stinking jungle gym. Everything's tacked up, guys, because I still want to articulate the rear suspension, make sure everything is groovy, make sure I get the actual ride height that I'm looking for once we get the thing on the ground. We're gonna leave it at that right now, and then we'll go ahead and focus our efforts on the front. So our front wheel is positioned exactly where we want it and I'm about a quarter inch off from the rear which is not a huge deal. We can raise the rear end up once we get it on the ground. 
But right now we have the front end pretty much situated where I'm gonna be happy with it. Now the only question now is where we're actually gonna mount our lower heim to our lower control arm. As you can see, we have this guy in the way. And I wanna go to the outside of the front of the control arm with a through bolt through the entire lower control arm and still fasten on the outside of the control arm in order to get around this guy. I just don't know if this is going to be able to jog past the upper control arm. I'm just going to measure the chromoly tube long so we can just cut it and just stick it in there and put it on either end of the half shaft and see if it clears. So I think up behind the half shaft is going to work. Look how much room I have back there. I'm gonna have to clearance this guy just a little bit, that web, but I think that is a promising look. All right, so it looks like we're going to be going with this hole right here. We just have to enlarge it about two sizes, and we're gonna make a spacer to come off this end to bolt it to here and give us the clearance we need for the half shaft. We're gonna throw a bolt through, go over to the other side, repeat the process, and then we're gonna finally be able to get this bad boy on the ground, see what it looks like, and take some measurements for the coilover so we can finally send that last piece of information in. All right, so I'm really happy with the back. Got a little bit of tuck on the top of the tire, but the front's a little too low. So I'm going to actually adjust the end link right now so you guys can actually see how we adjust the ride height. All we're going to do is just take a little weight off the truck, thread these up about an inch on either side, and that's going to fix this tire dumping all up in that fender like that because it's, it's a little way too low. All right guys, phase one of our push rod suspension is all set on our EVC 10. And just look at it. Would you just look at it? Thing is low. It is way lower than it was at SEMA. In the back you can see, there's no way you'd be able to get a coil over that's only seven inches long. So with this setup, we're now able to have a lot shorter travel on the outside where the actual suspension is and put all of our coil over on the inside. Same with the front. With that all wheel drive system that we're trying to make work with these half shafts everything was kind of in the way now with the push rod set up it's just where it needs to be and those billet rocker arms that jc made for us really knocks it out of the park so next time you see this truck we're going to be throwing the coil levers on it's going to bring a whole nother element to the bed with the whole jungle gym appeal as well as underneath the hood go ahead and comment below guys if you have any questions on the push rod suspension system how you can install this in your car, what you need and how to get started. So hopefully next time we'll be able to get the coilovers in the truck and finally get out to the track and see what this thing can do because I know you guys have been really waiting for that. So thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing and we'll see you guys next time. We do not condone, condone. These are big words for me. Side note, we do not condone drinking bourbon inside of a race truck.